Hello everyone! So today we're going to walk you through how to create a drone mapping mission with DroneLink. We've got a lot of users asking us to do a video about this because this is one of the few apps out in the market that actually supports an automatic mapping mission with DJI Mavic Mini series, especially Mini 2 and Mini SE. Potentially with the upcoming Mini 3 once the SDK got released as well. If you want to read a little bit more about the comments and review, please click the link below and have a read about the blog post that we wrote about this app. But right now, let's dive into the app and have a look how you can create that mapping mission. So today, let's have a look at this app on an iOS system. It cross supports Android and a desktop website version as well. Me personally prefer to drag it around and tap it on my phone screen uh, But there are other people preferring Planning a mission on your desktop with a bigger screen which makes perfect sense But they're all very similar with just slightly different organizations of the buttons um, Chose whichever way you prefer if you purchase their packages it will support all the platforms with just one account. So here on the left hand side you can see my own profile which having two terms one is called plans and the other called repositories. Plans basically is the automatic mission that you created and a repository is the folder that you can organize all these plans into it. And on the right hand side here there's a dashboard if you click into that it's basically the same interface that you have with the other drone DJI Go or DJI Fly. It's showing the real-time information of your remote, your drone, and the camera streaming. Since I'm not currently connected to any of those, so this is showing nothing there. And then if you go back here at the bottom right, you see this big pink create button, and this is the button we would use to create a drone mapping mission. Let's click on that, and it will bring us to the map. And here in the map area, it will prompt a window asking you what type of mission you would like to create. So not only planning a map, uh, with drone link, you can also do a waypoints planning, orbit planning, or a panorama shot. But here, let's just go with the map. And then on top here, it asks you a repository. Basically, it's asking you where you would like to store it. And I just store it in my default demo repository. If you want to store it at another place, scroll down. And here in the advanced section, you can create your own repository. There are also other options that you can explore, but let's just go with the easiest one today. So let's click this map mission. It will bring us back to the map. And here on the map, it shows us the scale of our current map and tells us to select a takeoff location and some tools here on the right hand side. Let's just select a takeoff location first. If just tap in the center of the screen, it will automatically generate a takeoff location. And here on the left hand side is the, some basic settings of this plan. So we can rename it instead of calling it a new map plan, make it into something that makes sense. And here you scroll down, there are a few other options. You can also add some descriptions or adding a few tags to make it more unique to you. And there are also takeoff restrictions and the actions on finish and the max speed limit of the drone. There's also some advanced settings, but we're not going to go through those today. Uh, let's just have a look at the basic ones here. So usually I keep everything as default, just trying to make sure about the action on finish is returning home. There are three options here. None means the drone will be hovering at the location once it's done uh, with the mapping mission. And auto landing means it will land it at the location once it's finishing. But since I'm out flying in the water a lot, I definitely don't want the drone to land there somewhere outside of the boat area, which means it will be landed in the water. And on the other hand, I don't want it to be hovering there just in case if there's any signal lost. So usually I would like the app itself to initiate the drone to return home. And while it's returning home and I've got a good connection between my remote and the drone, I would take over and land it by myself. 
So once I make sure that return home is selected for the action on finish, I'll click done here on the top and let's have a look at what's left on the screen. So here on the left hand side, there's a bunch of icons. We'll talk about this later. And on the right hand side, there's another set of icons. And then here in the center area, you can see a satellite map and the mission that automatically generated by the system. So we can just simply drag it around with one finger and put the area of interest in the center. And here my area of interest is this bean shape or semicircle playground underneath it. So you can also zoom in and out using two fingers, just as what you would normally do for any touchscreen devices. But as you can see, the square is clearly not align with the area that I'm interested in. So there are a few things I'd like to adjust. Let's just click on this red dot and it will bring out the basic parameters for the map. And here are some things that we could change. The first thing is the camera that we're using. It selected DJI Mavic Mini 2, which is the previous camera that I'm using. And you can select to whichever one that you are using at the moment. If your drone is not listed here, there's an option called custom. As long as you know the focal length of your lens and the sensor and the image parameters, you can actually put all those in and let the app calculate the flight path for you, which is super convenient. So let's put it back as Mini 2 and then it's the altitude. Altitude is related to the area that you would like to cover and also how much detail you would like to see. In my case, I know 50 meter would work for me. And the last thing I'd like to change is the overlap and side lap. So front lap is the normal overlap that we're talking about. And I would like to put it 50%. And side overlap, of course, is side lap. And I would also like to keep it as 80%. 80% is usually pretty safe for every settings. Uh, but once you get more experience, you would know if you could have a bigger overlap or smaller overlap depends on what you need. So once that is done, I will keep everything else as the default, but it is very powerful. You can actually change a lot of things. You can change the maximum speed of the drone. You can change the drone heading. You can change the gimbal pitch uh, and change the capture interval, so on and so forth. Depends on what packages you're having for your account. Once that is done, now let's have a look at this map again. It gets a lot denser with the flight lines, but the takeoff location is remaining the same. However, this is still not in the shape that we would like it to be after we modified the altitude and the side lap and overlap. So here on the right hand side, there are a bunch of buttons. Let's start from the bottom one. So this is a compass where you can rotate the map on the screen and in order to bring it back to true north just click on the compass icon and of course another button to help you zoom in and zoom out and a target location bringing you to your current location which i'm not going to click because this is an area somewhere else that i know i can plan a demo and this three dot is changing the map style, which is basically the base map that is going to show on the screen. It can be a street map or a satellite map. Me usually prefer using satellite map because I think it gives me more information about what the location looks like. And after this is done, the little lock icon on top allows me to change the shape of the polygon. By clicking that, it will change to green and unlock. And now we can see on the square, we have a lot more points available. So the normal white points is the point of the polygon. And the plus point is where you can add additional point on the polygon. Right now it's a square. It only has four white points. And we can drag the points to where it may fit my area of interest, but most likely it's not gonna be fit perfectly into a rectangle or square. So I could add another point just to make the shape align with my area of interest. So once this is done, there are several other things that you can change. You can change the location of takeoff at and landing just by dragging this blue purple pin around. You can also 
change the starting point of the mission by dragging this blue pin around and as you can see once you drag this blue pin around it will change the red dot which is the finishing point of the mission automatically and you can also change the direction of your flight path by dragging this compass icon on this green circle it's not very often but sometimes it does happen that you would like to fly at a different direction to avoid strong sun glint or get a more efficient flying time so once that is done let's have a look at these icons on the left hand side so here there is a clock icon to show the estimate time of the flight mission so it estimates it will take 10 minutes to fly and it will take around 200 images me personally knowing my drone well that I know within 10 minutes it will only use one battery and there will be enough time for me to control the drone and bring it back to me. So I'm happy with my current mission design. You could change that according to your plan by increase the area you'd like to map or changing the overlap or reduce the area that you would like to map. And you could also see a preview with this 3D button. It shows you on the side way according to a 3D map online and can shows you roughly if you are going to hit any obstacles at the height you're going to fly. Uh, it is all clear, so it's all good. You can also generate a preview using this little button and you can see a little video preview. The video shows what's supposed to be seen through your camera lenses and you can speed that up. It shows how it takes off, how the drone is approaching to the starting point. Once the starting point is reached, it will change its camera angle from horizontal to nadir, which is pointing down to the field. Once reached that location pointing down, it will start its mapping mission. And you can even use this little eye icon here to toggle the camera view off and have a look at real time on the map. And as you can see here, it shows you the orientation of the drone and as well as the orientation of the images. You don't need to check this every single time, but it will be helpful for you to understand the behavior of the drone for the first couple of times that you're doing a mapping mission. Once you're comfortable with all of this, you can quit the preview and the mission is saved automatically, come back to the main page, connect your drone, and open this demo that we just created and fly the drone when you're and fly the mapping mission once the drone is connected. So hopefully this video can give you a better understanding of how to plan a drone mapping mission with Drone Link. And of course, we're looking forward to seeing you upload your data to our GeoNadio platform. Thank you for watching.